What is going on, guys? Um, Joey here. You guys are about to watch the podcast I did with Jessica Bittner. Um, I'm making this little intro to let you guys know that I was trying to get my uh, camera working um, during the call, but for whatever reason, she could see me, um, but I just was unable to get up on the screen. I didn't want to waste her time trying to figure it out. So uh, for the podcast, you guys are just going to see her on uh, screen with my audio in the background uh, a lot of useful stuff in here um, very interesting stuff you know I think a lot of people are gonna gain a lot from this uh, especially if they're type 1 diabetic even if you're not even if you're just curious if, if you kind of see her lifts uh, and her performance and you know you kind of wonder if is insulin playing a factor in that uh, we go through all of that uh, here so um, thank you guys so much and uh, yeah I hope you guys enjoy what is going on guys joey friends are here with flex training systems uh you only see jessica because i don't know how to get myself on screen at the moment <laughs> um um but yeah i don't want to say i don't want to screw up your last name so if you could say it for me it's bittner that's how you say it that, yeah you probably would not have guessed no i thought it was like bootner because the ue but you're are you french canadian or no, I'm a uh, Ukrainian and German heritage wise, but so that's a German last name. So I'm not even saying it right. Yeah. yeah. Got it. All right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the reason why I wanted to have you on, one of the reasons is because, uh, you know, not only are you relevant in the IPF, um, but you, you have type one diabetes and it does, you know, that type one diabetes doesn't seem to stop you from, uh, you know, achieving your goals or, um, re really, really any anything for that matter. I mean, we can get into that. You could tell us like what, what it does inhibit you from doing, but it seems like as far as a, you know, powerlifting perspective, um, you know, you seem to be fine. Um, which I thought was so interesting. And I, I just started to think about, you know, I know, I know that you have to take your insulin to a, does it address food that you ingest? Oh, yeah. Like any, it addresses food, stress, um, pretty much everything. Like, like I, so, so could you talk about the differences between type one and type two? Um, and then just like, let us know, like when you were diagnosed. Yeah. So type one diabetes is the type I have. And it's, um, it used to be called juvenile diabetes, uh, because it's an autoimmune reaction um, where your own body just decides to destroy all of your in insulin producing cells, all of them. Um, so yeah, what that does is now I kind of have to be my own organ. So I have to give myself um, insulin through injections because I don't produce any whatsoever. It is not related to lifestyle. It's pretty much just random. A specific organ in your body that doesn't work, like your pancreas or, or something like that? Or is it just like your body just doesn't produce insulin like a normal person? Um, uh, well, I used to produce insulin like a normal person. And um, all of a sudden, so your insulin is produced in your pancreas. Uh, they don't really know what causes it, but uh, yeah, just all of a sudden over a period about a month and a half, um, my body just decided to destroy its own insulin producing cells in my pancreas. And I don't really know why. There's only one other person in my family who's ever had type one and it's my great aunt. But other than that, they're all type twos. <laughs> And how Which is very how, different. <laughs> how old were you when you were? I was eleven. Got it. Um, just a tiny. Oh, okay. Bit. Yeah, yeah. No worries. Um, is that better? Uh, let me speak. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. That's great, actually. I think that was just the thing. It was too much like ambient noise coming on my end. Uh, but no worries. So, sorry. When did you find out that you had type one diabetes? Uh, when I was eleven years old. Yeah. And at that age, you know, uh, I assume you weren't administering the insulin yourself. Your parents had to do it for you, correct? Uh, it was a mix of both. I actually started out being able to do my own insulin pretty well, but then I got really scared 
and I kind of had like a fallback phase where my mom had to come to the school every single day just so I could eat. <laughs> She'd have to give me insulin, but Damn. yeah. All right. So when you found out, I mean, you were so young, were you, were you worried? Were you like alarmed? Did, 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 were you concerned that you weren't be able to, you know, do normal things or were you just like, Oh, you know, it's not a big deal. Whatever. I'm 11. I don't really, <laughs> this doesn't really bother me. <laughs> um, kind of a mix of both. I cried because I had to miss my soccer game because I was in the hospital that week. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I got really upset a while after because I just figured it in my own mind that I could never lose weight for some reason. Interesting. So that was something I freaked out over. But I didn't really care that I had to do insulin for life. And it never really I, bothered me that way. I mean, I don't know the answer, but do you feel like you've had any issues dieting because of your condition? Actually, diabetes has probably been helpful for me dieting because... I've been given all the tools to I uh, really keep track of my macros and be in touch with my body, but it is a big pain in the ass, that's for sure. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm not going to say that what I have dealt with is anything close to what you've dealt with, but um, when I was doing Invisalign, so you can imagine like when you're out, it's kind of annoying. So I know what it's like to have a little annoyance that you always have to address uh, you know, at any given point, whenever it comes to food, I, I, you know, I'm not administering insulin. It's not affecting how I feel or anything like that, but it is something that's like not in my normal routine that I had to do for like years. So that was like, you know, not close to what you're dealing with. I'm not, you know, I don't have sympathy for me. I'm just saying, you know, it, it is like, if I want to go to bed, it's like, ah, oh, I gotta, I gotta make sure I put my, my, my retainers in, or if I want to eat, I have to take them out. But um, do you have, uh, do you just like inject, um, your skin somewhere or do you have like the little, it's like a little, it's like a little circle. It's like a little circle that's just on you at all times. I do not have an insulin pump. I just do injections. So as a, it's a lot of injections. So I have this, my insulin routine is I have a background insulin, which I inject once a day. That one just keeps everything stable, I guess, or tries to. Um, and it lasts 24 hours. And then every time I eat, I do a short acting insulin. So that is literally, that is all the time that ranges anywhere between probably minimum seven and maximum about 12 insulin injections a day. And it's just sub subcutaneous, like into the fat. Damn. It's yeah. just so annoying, you know, but it's something that I, I guess I'm used to doing. It'd be weird to not have to, but I can see that. I mean, you've done. And then I do have this. What is that? That is my blood sugar monitor. It's called the Freestyle Libra, and I can just actually scan it whenever I want to see my sugars. So that's been nice, not having to test my fingers as many times as I used to. I can imagine how annoying that is. Do you, so like hold on. Uh, so I guess we're gonna transition to what is that? Is that you right now? Yeah, that's my sugars. They've Seven. been really good today. That's why I'm going to show it. <laughs> so is there something, can you just like take more food or more insulin and kind of control how you're going to be for the day? Or is it more so, it, it just depends. Like, you know, sometimes you you might do everything right and it's still off or, uh, you know, is it more, can you control it more or is it very dependent on just what your body's going through at the moment? Um... It ranges all the time. If you have a set routine, it's kind of easier to control and to predict. But even still, you can just knock you sideways sometimes. Like for me, I do not have a set routine almost whatsoever. So it's kind of a guessing game all the time. Um, I just have to do a lot of small insulin injections to try and keep it under control. Um, but then sometimes like I'll get to work and there'll be a million angry people staring at me and my blood sugar will get <sighs> super high because, you know, I work at Walmart. So, <laughs> um, in the pharmacy, right? Yeah. In the pharmacy. All right. So <laughs> when, when did you first get into lifting and like, how did that transition into powerlifting or was it just straight powerlifting off the, off the get go? Oh, definitely not. I used to, I was really into soccer and track and field. 
And I still continued with track and field up until a year ago, actually, at a college level. Um, so the lifting really? kind of came along with that. Yeah. How, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I just turned 24. So just out of the juniors? Just, yeah. It's my first year in Open. Okay, that makes sense. All right. So you used to run track and... And um, pole vault and shot put mostly. Okay, so yeah, I I threw shot put in high school, so it was just lifting. Hey. Yeah, it was just lifting and throwing. So it wasn't. Uh, once in a while, we would do like we call it the fat man relay. I wasn't fat then, but, <laughs> we, but I was like the smallest guy. But uh, we would just sprint, um, you know, to do a relay just for fun. But uh, you know, it's it's it was fun. You know, did you did you, which one did you like more? Pole vaulting? What? What? Yeah, I used to pole vault a long time ago. I loved it, but my legs ended up getting too heavy, and it became really hard. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Um, so I gave up and did shot put for a while, and which I'm naturally better at. I can imagine. Uh, I mean, all we did was literally the power lift. They let me do my own lifting back then, and then I just threw a shot, and it was, that was it. But uh, do you? So then you transitioned to powerlifting from that. Did that kind of introduce you to? the big three or did you guys have powerlifting at school or? Uh, no, we definitely do not. Um, that's not really a thing in Canada. Like we're, we're a club. Um, mm -hmm. we don't really have much for university powerlifting, but yeah, no, I always did a lot of Olympic lifting for, um, shot put and pole vault. So, uh, I was never allowed to deadlift though. Because of just like, them <laughs> yeah. Being so, <laughs> Actually, two years ago, I quit deadlifting for eight months because I wasn't allowed to from track and field. Did you know that? <laughs> I did not know that. So hold up. So the first time I ever saw you was 2016 Worlds. First mm -hmm. time ever. Uh, I believe you won. And I remember there's a picture of you jumping really high. That's what I remember from that Worlds. <laughs> right? Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jumping like super duper high. Um, so... So there was a time from then till now where you had to stop lifting. You had to stop deadlifting. Yeah. Actually, it would have been pretty soon after that, I think. Because for what? They just didn't want um, to be hurt or what? The, the track coaches did not – well, my one coach did not like deadlifting. Um, I'm not entirely sure why, but – did you like? Yeah, we just I just was like, not allowed to deadlift heavy or almost at all. Like I just I still kind of did, but I never said anything about it. Yeah, I was going to say, were you a pocket deadlifter? Sorry, if it looks like I'm on my phone, I'm just trying to figure out how to get the face cam up while you answer. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no worries. But yeah, um, did you just like secretly deadlift like pocket deadlifts? Like, ah, OK, no one's around. All right, I'm going to deadlift now. Yeah, pretty much. And I got told on a couple times though. I was I was pretty mad. <laughs> That's such a wrong. Do you see how absurd that is though? I know, right? Yeah. I mean, it kind of does No, it doesn't make sense. I'm not even going to try and yeah. <laughs> justify that, but Yeah, that's uh that's crazy. So um what made you get into what is the what is your fed is called CPU, right? Yeah, that's what the Canadian IPF yeah. branch is. And, and what made you, like, get into competing in the CPU specifically? And then, you know, was someone pushing you like, hey, I think you're really good. You should do Worlds or, or try to do Worlds or whatever. Or, you know, like, how did you get into all that? Uh, well, I just, uh, I sprained my ankle and I couldn't pole vault anymore. So I went to provincials that year with my friend Cameron from PA or Prince Albert Saskatchewan small that's where I grew up anyways and then um I actually got a national deadlift record at that meet nice for juniors so I qualified for nationals maybe a year later and then I just ended up going to worlds from there it was kind of spontaneous really I didn't really plan it after you got your taste of IPF Worlds, were you eager to defend your title or were you just kind of like, oh, that's cool that I did that, whatever? I totally didn't understand. I kind of, <laughs> uh, it's because I was, I left Worlds early just to go back for a track meet. So I didn't really, I didn't really get it. Uh, now I look back and think that that was, I didn't realize how much of a 
big deal it is to win. How, what is your oh. like mindset now? Like, do you, are you hungry for worlds? Are you like, man, I can't wait to compete at nationals. You have nationals coming up, right? Yeah, I do. Um, I'm really excited. I'm a little nervous because I have a, I still have a big weight cut ahead of me. Um, it's going well though, but even still, uh, it's really good competition. It's super high level. So like, like you have people that are going to give you a run for your money or, or just the meat is ran well. No, like it's competitive. I, uh, I will never take anything for granted. And there's definitely, there's a few lifters. Uh, we're all really close. I am. Really? I, <laughs> I did not know that. I thought you were just like, I know in the juniors you killed everyone. It was like not fair. <laughs> you know what? There is no, um, there was a few injuries in that class too. It would have been. And Vilma Olsen too. Would you not ever want to move up? Would you be competitive? To, would you be competitive in your country in the eighty fours if you decided to just not cut? Uh I would be competitive, yeah. But at a world level, I think I'd be more competitive in seventy two. Okay, so you're thinking about like so you think you'd be able to make worlds in eighty fours? I th I think so. I'm not uh I don't think I would win nationals, but I think I would be like, you have to get first or second. Okay. I think I would be, I'd be in the running for sure. Would you ever consider? I mean, have you ever tried not cutting? I know, I know you, I know you did one, um, not too long ago. I know because I think I had a girl do it, and you were very, you were just over. I don't know if you missed weight or if you just like didn't cut. I missed weight, but I didn't try very hard either. It wasn't. Uh, I just didn't have the motivation. Yeah, cuts are – I've done some pretty crazy cuts, and there's a part when, like, all right, I'm four pounds over, and nothing is coming out. How am I going to get this out? And you just have to it, – it's so hard. But when you get it out, you got to start moving. You got to start spitting, stay warm. And once you do it, though, it's like this giant weight is, oh, I finally made weight. Now I can eat. Now I can bulk up. So I can – What's imagine. the most weight you've ever – Um. So uh, – Bench press nationals and nationals 2016. I went from 247 to 231. Okay. Um, but what was crazy is that I didn't lose any strength. Like I had my best bench ever doing that, which I thought it was such a it was such a shitty situation because I was traveling and I thought I was weighing in in the morning, but I was actually weighing in five hours later. So I screwed up uh, some timings, and I remember it was freezing cold in Colorado um, when when bench nationals was going on and in the sauna, it was like, my body was so cold that it took for, it took like 45 minutes for my body just to adjust to the sauna. So I'm sitting in there like, I'm not going to make weight, but I said, I'm going to give it everything. And if I miss, I miss. But, um, what ended up happening was, uh, you know how we have our weigh in time. It's like, let's say it's at seven 30 and I'll lift at nine, right. Or, or, or nine 30, whatever. I was the absolute last person to weigh in. And my flight was starting 30 minutes. Like I was at the, I was literally the last minute that you could weigh in. I went in the room. I have nothing on, you know, and I'm just going on the scale and I'm standing on the scale and the scale's like, the scale's like doing this. It's like, you guys can't see, but I'm like, I'm juggling my hands right now. And it's like fluttering. It's fluttering. It's like 105 and then 104 something, 105 one. And the, the, the ref was like, ah, oh, I think you're good. And then he's like 105 on the dot. Like it was so the scale it was so close that the scale was like couldn't decide if I was under or over. So I mean, if you take an average of all those little decimals, I was probably fine. But um, now the problem is I have thirty minutes before my flight starts. Right. Luckily, I have a decent bench, so I'm like later in the flight. And it's crazy. I ended up tying first, second, third. So first, second, third, we all hit two ten. So four sixty three pounds. Okay. Cool. Um, I ended up doing well, and it, that meet kind of just showed me, like, you can have fast warm-ups and miss all your marks, but as long as you, like, timing-wise, it was not what I would ever prefer, but I ate enough food, I drank enough water, I was able to get my weight back, and, you know, I hit a double body weight bench at 105, which is pretty good, so, um, well, to, tie, sweet, yeah. to tie for a second, third, and then I lost on body weight because I was the heaviest, obviously, but, um, you know, it's pretty cool. Um, so, you know, 
that that is a now now I'm gonna flip it on you. What is your biggest cut? And do you remember ever thinking like, shit, I'm gonna die? Because <laughs> um, I know they can be really hard. Honestly, they're dangerous. When I have a lifter cutting a lot, I'm like, uh, like please check in with me. You know, I don't want you to pass out or anything. Uh, okay. So when I first got into powerlifting, um, I just uh, it was a big cut. Um, it was pretty much as much as years, only I weigh less. Yeah, so probably harder, for sure. So about 16 pounds because I didn't, uh, I was just with a friend and he was doing an extreme water cut and I just didn't understand that you probably shouldn't do that. I was, I think, 19 years old at the time, so I just went with it and lost about 16 pounds. Do you regret doing that? Like, is it something that you would advise now or... Or, you know, are you just like, no way, dude, don't cut. There's no point. I just don't know how I did that. Um, I still, I lifted all right, actually, but I just don't know how I, how I did that. Nuts. I mean, determination. It's honestly. Just not knowing any better. I don't know. I had a really smart, um, even, even then though. Um, like my mom has a degree in nutrition and, uh, I was really good at replenishing everything. Nice. That's like, so, the, that's like the main thing. Yeah. Yeah. If you can get it all back after you make the weight, um, you know, you, you'll be all right. I mean, I'm assuming you did well or were you weak as shit? Like, did you go like one for three for nine or what? I think I went nine for nine, but that was really early on. Okay. So you're probably like conservative or, you know, yeah. definitely had more in the tank. Got it. Um, so transitioning now, I want to, I'm saving the juicy stuff for like a little bit later, but have you ever, okay. have you ever sustained, um, like a big injury? Like, I mean, you diet, would you say that you diet into every meat? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, do you get to weigh a couple weeks out or like you're literally coming down all the way and then you make it at the last second? Last second. Yeah. All right. I'm just heavy. I mean, you're very dense. Like, so you have a lot of muscle on you. So I can see why, you know, um, I'm, I, it makes me wonder just the coaching in my head. It's like, well, what if she tried 84s, you know, for a year? What would she do? You know what I mean? Um, have you ever experienced like just staying at 84 and just trying to, to progress them there? And when you do cut, do you see any difference from your gym numbers to um, you hit on the platform or is it pretty much like, you know, pretty consistent? Uh, pretty consistent. And you know what? Previously, I'm not sure about this nationals, uh, but previously I've seen bigger numbers in meets than in the gym. And that's because in yeah. the gym, yeah. I normally like, I, I don't usually carve up for lifts or anything. I just, um, yeah, I guess I just, <laughs> it's always after work. I never feel good when I train, you know? What's the, I'm used to my blood sugars being a little bit off, whereas competition, it's a little bit different. What's the meat day um, procedure in terms of, like, taking your insulin and eating and things like that? It's just a mess. It's just as much as I can eat and as much – well, like, trying to match insulin is extremely difficult. Um, you wouldn't believe what's going on in your body when you're trying to replenish all of that food and then have these huge adrenaline rushes from lifting. Um, so trying to match that without having a functioning pancreas is really hard. I basically have to just try to keep doing as much insulin as I can and eat according. Constantly checking to see like, okay, where am I at? I need to eat more. I need to do more insulin you know, to make sure that you can perform. And is there a level that, okay, I know that if I can't get my levels here, then I'm not going to be able to lift, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like, well, too low would be the limit. Like, if my blood sugar ever gets too low, I can actually die. Mm -hmm. Not an exaggeration. Is it, is there have a, been times, not instant, necessarily. Will you just fall over and die? Or is it like you start to seizure. Feel, oh, shit. Damn. It wouldn't be super sudden, but like, but, uh, I'd start to feel really dizzy and, and tired and stuff. And then, yeah, you just lose consciousness and have a seizure. And if it gets worse, you can get brain damage and that's it. 
Um, I haven't gone to, I have never actually, knock on wood, I've never actually passed out like that from a low, a low blood sugar. So I'm fortunate that way. My body seems to be able to withstand a lot of abuse. Um, I know other people have passed out when their sugars have been, I don't know if you know anything about blood sugars, but they're supposed to be over 4.0 or else the other units are um, 70 milligrams per deciliter. My blood sugar has been below one before and I have been confused as hell, but still conscious. Many other people would have had a seizure by then for sure. They teach us in school that you get brain damage below two. I've been there too many times. <laughs> How does that happen? Um, like the sugar is getting that low? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it can be a lot of things. It's usually doing too much insulin or not eating enough or a combination of the two, which you'd think would be easy to predict, but I don't know. Sometimes it's not. I would imagine um, it's a, a simple fix, right? You just take, you just eat more, like you could just take a quick sugar and it could bring you up, right? Or yes. Or is it harder than that? Uh, yeah, it, that, that is exactly what you do. But the problem is it takes, as far as competition goes too, it takes 20 minutes for that sugar to really kick in. So if I go too low or too high, um, it's, it's risky for competition too. And the thing is, is sometimes you're in situations where you don't have food on you or you've eaten all of your low blood glucose supplies. So that's the real dangerous point. How often does that happen? I would imagine that you have like snacks in your car or all around you at all, all the time. Yeah. There's sugar and maple syrup everywhere. Damn, that's so that's just kind of like something that you have to deal with. Do you feel like it takes a large part of your day to manage all these things? Or are you pretty much like, you know, it doesn't really bother you that much? My day just rev I don't, uh, I guess I don't really share enough of that, but my day just 100% revolves around my blood sugars and how that affects everything else. Uh, well, not 100%, but it's something I can absolutely never ignore. Otherwise, my day yeah. is utterly and completely ruined. So um, just kind of generally speaking, uh, I might have a question on this a little bit later, but generally speaking, my whole, you know, my, like – Obviously, like, you know, you've posted your body here and there on Instagram. Um, res respectfully, I think you're just proud of your gains, right? And they are respectable gains that should be shared. And, you know, you, when I see you, I think at first I was like, oh, this is the ignorant me when I first saw, found out that you were type 1 di diabetic because I know that bodybuilders take, some, some of them take insulin to shuttle more nutrients into the muscle, which is like very, very dangerous uh, in the first place. But um, what I used to think is, oh, she's so lean because she takes this insulin. But the way I started to see it and I started to talk with a buddy about it who has experience, shout out to Alberto Nunez. What's up, dog? Um, he, he was saying that someone like you, imagine imagine if you, if, if, a, if you took any person that had the you know, genetic capability to build a, a decent amount of muscle, you know, a little, a little more, a little less than what you're at. Right. It could be a boy, girl, whatever, but imagine they had to be perfect with their nutrition pretty much at all times. And they had, they had an inherent sort of condition that made them kind of think twice before they went ham. Yeah. Right. So, so I am confident because I have been, I would have to dig, but I'm sure someone will see this and go far back on my Instagram, you know, and, and find them. I used to be <laughs> shredded all the time because I was a personal trainer. I live in uh, North Hollywood and that was like my lifeblood. If I didn't look good, then I wasn't going to get work. Um, and I remember around the first time Pacquiao fought Mayweather, I believe in the last 10 years, uh, I was so lean that I was like... I was like annoying to be around. That's how strict I was with my food. No, seriously. Like I remember, I remember being on a date with this girl and she was like disgusted that I ate the way that I ate. Like I put mustard on my salad and she was like, Oh my God. She was like, well, all I did back then. That's was, relatable. Right. Like I didn't. Not salad, but I don't know, like chicken stuff. <laughs> 
So like I, uh, you know, I would only eat carbs if I had a need for them. Meaning if I was going to train, I would have carbs before. If I was going to, you know, um, that and, and then so it was before training and after training and maybe a little bit for breakfast. That was it. That was it. There was no deviation. And I did that for years. Right. That I didn't know about macros back then. That's just what I did. And, um, you know, I, I had a very different body composition than I do now. Right now, you know, I'm competing in powerlifting. I am infinite, infinitely more durable in a higher weight class than in the lower weight class. Um, and the progress that I've seen is like, like if I gave, uh, I could give the same effort and just stay in this class and 1900 is easy. I might even hit that at the Arnold. I'm not saying I'm reaching for that, but like the fact that when I came into the sport that that is even part of the conversation is nuts to me. Right. So obviously there's many benefits for me and you know, whoever to stay in the, in the high year class. So I can, re I can, uh, you know, I can't say that I relate to you because I don't know. I don't know what you have to go through and I can't imagine that you, you know, what you deal with mentally, maybe you don't feel like injecting insulin that one day. You're just like, fuck, I don't want to do this right now. Oh yeah, no, that's uh that's funny. Yeah, no, low carb actually, that'll keep you super lean. That's pretty much what I try to aim for. Most of the time I'll only eat carbs when I, when I need them and it's been working pretty well. Um, yeah, and I always yeah. laugh when people, uh, yeah, I always laugh when people say, just do more insulin. Um, she does extra insulin. It makes her muscular no, no, because so, so there's, there's no, nothing no. that will make you fat faster than doing too much insulin. So nothing. So like, uh, I mean, obviously we have to adhere to the laws of thermodynamics. So like, if energy is going in, it needs to go somewhere. Um, so yeah. I think I was using carb restriction as a way of calorie manipulation um, and just really being in tune with energy levels. I mean, that's pretty much what you're doing, right? You're in tune with your energy levels. Like you have to, if you feel really sluggish, you're going to have to take some food and take some insulin, correct? Yeah, exactly. And then I also know when I'm gaining weight because my sugars will tend to rise even though I'm doing the same amount of insulin. So it's handy to have that biofeedback that way. Mm -hmm. um, and then also when my sugars start to drop during a workout, that um, like your body makes will start to make glucose out of uh, amino acids. And Breaking if you don't have any in your blood, then your muscle. So at that point, I will know that I need to eat glucose in order to prevent that well for me it's preventing a low blood sugar but for somebody else that who doesn't test their blood sugar they'd be missing out on that opportunity kind of thing do you feel that you having to take insulin uh is giving you any kind of advantage and um i mean obviously it's it's legal i mean you compete in the ipf they're you know when they drug test you i'm sure you've been tested infinity times um, you know, they're going to see maybe, I mean, I mean, I guess it would just be elevated insulin or lower insulin, but they don't even probably even look for that because, you know, it's not going to make you, it's not going to signal your body to make super physiological levels of muscle. It, it, insulin obviously is like the, it's anabolic in the sense that when it's in your system, it's going to help address nutrients, right? yeah uh, people don't understand that you i can't do you have to match insulin to the amount of food you're eating so i can't just do more insulin than i could if i wasn't diabetic and people so i can actually and i can actually only get up to probably maybe 90 percent of the blood sugar control someone else would have i would say 90 is pushing it probably 85 or 80 percent so i would not say it's an advantage at all but the knowledge it gives me has been an absolute blessing as far as health and fitness and yeah. even pharmacy goes. It's been giving me a lot of understanding. Yeah. So I think, you know, so for people out there that are like, no way, she's definitely getting a benefit, whatever. Um, when you take a ton of insulin, if there's no food there, all that's going to do is drop your blood sugar, right? And you're going to die. Yeah. Like I'll die or else I'll have to eat a bunch. And it doesn't make you it's not solely responsible for gaining muscle. It's a uh, like insulin is way more efficient at making you fat because you can only put on a small amount of muscle a day, but you can put on an almost infinite amount of fat and yeah. the insulin. That's what it's going to do after that amount of muscle is. So hypothetically speaking, if you ate a shit ton of food and took a shit ton of insulin, you're 
probably going to store a bunch of fat like any normal person would had they eaten a, a you know substantial amount of food in one sitting or you know if you just went on a binge streak and you're just pumping insulin you know for a week you would just get fat oh yeah i get fatter i can get fat really quickly i don't know if it's quick, like more quickly than other people but it feels like it uh you ask anyone any type 1 diabetic how easy it is to get just puffy you know just feeling gross it's it's real happens real fast nice so nice <laughs> nice so i'm gonna roll, I'm gonna roll it back i'm gonna roll it back let's say you're it's meat day right you you, you lift at 10 right it's 8 a.m you know you've already weighed in you have two hours now how have you taken any insulin at this point uh are you gonna take more um do you take the insulin first then you eat the food or you know, what is the procedure leading into squat opener at 10 a.m. if your weigh-in's at 8? So, if I, once I'm in line for weigh-in, I don't want, I will do insulin. Insulin first. It takes a while to kick in. But I don't want to do it too far ahead of time in case it's going to drop my blood sugar. And then I'll have to have a bunch of sugar and I'll wreck my weigh-in. So, it's kind of a fine line. Um, insulin first, about half an hour before I weigh in, hopefully. And then after that, I'll go for liquids first. And as that insulin's kicking in, I'll start to eat some carbohydrates. I usually aim to replace my glycogen stores. So I aim for at least 150 grams of carbohydrates before squats. If you do that, <laughs> sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. If you do that, oh, go ahead. um, do you like, okay, if I'm taking 150 carb, I know that I can take X amount of insulin and it should handle that? Or is it like, depending on the sources or, you know, does it vary? Um, it's kind of a toss up. It really does vary. Like I can estimate, but at that point, my weight is changing so much that I don't really know. I usually over, I, I guess I aim for error on the side of too much insulin because I can just always eat to accommodate for it. It's way easier to bring up a low than to um, bring down a high. A high takes an hour and a half, two hours to fix. So that can be disastrous for 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 lifting. Damn. So yeah. do you feel like you have it down at this point? You're pretty much like, all right, I know that, you know, if I'm going to compete, this is pretty much what I'm going to have to bring with me. This is what I'm going to have to do. And just in case, you know, I'll bring extra this or that. Or is it kind of like, fuck, I don't know what's going to happen. Let's see. Let's just go with the punches. and It's a combination of both. Like, I, uh, I I really prepare for every scenario I can think of. And I have so much sugar, diabetes supplies, whatever with me. But it is kind of a toss-up sometimes. So I will never take for granted having a good performance. Um, I know that I can force myself to lift some solid weights under extremely shitty conditions. But... I can never take for granted that I'm going to have uh, a great meet because any small thing could happen and it could wreck everything. So I honestly just, uh, it kind of takes away my nerves if that makes any sense. Because you just, because it's like something you're familiar with or you just know like, okay, I know that it, I know that if I do this, I'm going to perform. So you're kind of like not worried about it. Yeah, like almost, it's almost like worrying about my diabetes kind of takes away from worrying about lifting weights because. Oh, interesting. I don't know. Also, because I lift weights all the time, and you know what? It's it's just like the gym. Yeah, I um, I think it's very only with a lot more people watching. <laughs> how many how many meets have you done? If you don't mind me asking, or just a ballpark if you're not sure. Um, I maybe do three or four a year so probably like 10 to 15 okay um so i mean at this point it's just kind of like once you're on the platform you're not thinking you're just lifting that's it you're not worrying about nothing is that kind of how you you enter like that flow state you know what i mean um is that something that you can relate to? Is that pretty much where you're at now? Or do you still like, oh my God, am I, am I going to hit death? Is my bench going to be held long enough? Like, you know, am I going to hitch my deadlift? Do you still think about these things? Or are you kind of just past all that at this point? Uh, I, I kind of think about those things, but I usually just more focused on the lift because I don't know when you have a 400 pounds on your back for squats, it kind of knocks those thoughts right out of you. Yeah. Um, 
the first time I did the Arnold, friggin' four years ago. Crazy. <laughs> time flies. Yeah, how old uh, are you? I am 28. So, nice. this would be my fourth Arnold. Um, but, uh, oh, wait. So, yeah, I'm probably going to do five. Imagine do five, do hit 2,000, and then just hang it up. <laughs> but um yeah so the first time i did it i remember walking out there and i know that my lifters experienced this even my more experienced lifters um because the arnold is like you're in this hallway right you guys can't see but i'm using my hands to, like shape the room there's this hallway and there's filled with people and there's like three lights and there's one center light that's right on you right and when you walk out there, everybody's looking at you and it's just like, holy shit, this is a, and it is dark and the only light is on you. So it's like, you're the center of attention. And the first time I ever did the Arnold way back, I was like, fuck, you know, it kind of, it kind of hit me. And now when I do any meet nationals, prime time, uh, you know, the Arnold, I don't, I'm just like, I'm just lifting guys. Like I, I remember I hit, um, you know, I'll hit a PR and just be like, I, you know, I did, I did 30 pounds less than this in the gym. It's fine. You know, like <laughs> you, we kind of, we kind of take it for not, not for granted, but I'm just like, I expect it of myself because it's so routine for me now. It's like automatic. I don't even think about it. Um, you know, but then afterwards I'll be laying in bed one day and I'm like, fuck man, like I did really good. You know what I mean? So that's, that's always like, I think it's more so the reflection of all the time that I put in to get here versus in the moment, um, you know, that, that really just, that's when I really kind of appreciate how far that I've come and what I've done. I'm sure you've had that moment or, or you might, uh, you know, squat 450 bench, you know, 250 and pull like five something, you are pull 600 one day. I wouldn't be surprised, you know, and, and you'll be like, wow, like I'm probably one of the first girls to ever, you know, ever do this. Like, and I have, I think, I think honestly, Jessica, you're like a, you're like a, you're like a freaking superhero in the sense that like you have this thing that's very different about you and, and you, you, you don't let it stop you from being, being great at power, you know, or whatever the hell it is in life that you decide to apply yourself to. But, you know, and, and just to see like, wow, this person is, I will just hold my laptop. Is that better? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, it was so loud. It almost it it was so loud that it blind blinded me. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, I think it's just what you what you're doing is crazy, and um, you know, I could totally see how people would think that the whole diabetes thing would like give you an advantage. But if anything, would you think that it's more of a hindrance? Like, you can't just, like, all right, I'm going to pump in this food, and, you know, I'm going to lift. It's like, all right, I'm going to take this food, make sure I got enough insulin so I don't die. Yeah, like, I, I don't think it's an advantage at all. I definitely think it's a it's a disadvantage. Um, I just don't – you don't share the everyday I – don't, I don't share nearly enough of the things that are difficult. Um but yeah, every day is What's the hardest thing. I have it in my notes. The biggest pain. What's the biggest pain about it? The biggest pain is having to wait to do something because my blood sugar is too high or too low. Like, for example, I got up really early in the morning the other day and my blood sugar was so high that I couldn't deadlift. But then I had to go to work until like 10 p.m. So I just couldn't work out that day. And I'd be mad. I'd be very frustrated. Yeah, and like things like that happen all the time. So it's just. Patience and um, diabetes doesn't stop me, but it definitely slows me down sometimes for sure. And I just want to show other people type 1 diabetes and other people who are struggling with kind of chronic medical conditions that y you can you can do anything you set your mind to. It's just going to be it's just going to be different and more difficult. Harder. Yeah, a little bit harder. <laughs> definitely. I actually have. Um... It's interesting. I had a couple of questions from people that do have type one diabetes and we're going to get to that. Oh, um, yeah. but, um, okay. So, so we're talking about patients, right? The other day, I think it was like a couple of weeks ago, I DM'd you because I was like, I was like, this crazy person just came at her and you responded like a freaking, um, yeah. So someone, someone was in, in your DMs, like just 
I don't even know what they were saying. Saying something about you're a cheater or you're taking steroids or you know it's not even your hard work. It's like your your it's your it's your insulin that's giving you gains or whatever. And this person's obviously very ignorant. They don't understand um, what's going on. But you responded so you responded like a freaking president, right? Like, like, not, not our president, but like you know politicians. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna you, say you, you are so like um just calm and you and you gave you gave like you're like okay let me have empathy for this person let me see that this person obviously doesn't understand and you just gave them like a smart answer so i was i just wanted to ask you was there ever a point where people gave you shit and and you were not like that or had you always just been like sort of okay let me let me educate this person uh you know let me let me see where they're coming from whatever I've been pre- I've been like that for a long time. I don't usually respond with shitty comments. Um, the odd time I've put someone on blast on my Instagram story, and I got some threats from that, so I stopped. <laughs> yeah, like people are the worst. It's your own comment, buddy. Like I reposted someone's comment on one of my uh, one of my videos, and then they they were threatening me like they were going to hurt me or something. And it was their own comment. I don't understand. Like they're just mad Honestly, because people um, saw it. I think that I was talking to someone in the gym. I was thinking about just you as a person, you, the fact that you exist for it. I w- we're in 2019 now, but I would say for an older mentality, um, your existence is very disruptive. Does that make sense? Like you're 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 a you're very you're very, you're a strong girl, right? You're stronger than I would say. I would say stronger than most dudes, right? I mean, obviously, if it's a regular dude, you're gonna be infinitely stronger than them, right? Okay. Um. There we go. You don't have to use your hands though. Um. So, uh, I would say that you're 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 like you're not normal in the sense that like you're not common. Does that make sense? Like you're a very uh, you're lean as I would say you're relatively lean. You're super strong. Um, what are your best lifts? We should have gone over that at the beginning, but like, what are your best power lifts? Oh, my deadlift. Uh, I did 240 kilograms on a Texas power bar. Power bar? Not too long ago. Power bar or deadlift bar? Deadlift bar. Deadlift bar. Okay, because they're different. The whippy one. Okay, yeah. Uh, the power bar whips a little bit more than the than the Alico, but uh, it's you know it's not as the Dela bar is like. I did two thirty five on a po- Texas power bar, but I've also done. Yeah, I think my okay. So my deadlift PB is five hundred eight pounds with a stiff bar, like in the gym a couple weeks ago. I'm pulling. And then my best bench is 97.5 kgs so like 215 pounds it's not very good <laughs> that's my worst list <laughs> i'm trying though i'm trying so hard um and then my best squat is 418 pounds so 190 kilos so and that was a few months ago for those that don't know uh two 240 is uh 529 pounds so that's pretty, yeah. pretty good. Um, pretty, pretty good. And uh, you can grind, like, hard. Like, I've seen you just grind the crap out of your deadlifts, um, which is pretty nuts. Um, did you hurt your back recently? Uh, I, I tweaked it, yeah. Like, it, it was just a spasm. My spine was in a good position, but everything just kind of seized up. It was early in the morning, and it still yeah. hurts, but I'm able to move better thanks to my physio, Nice, Adrian. Um, I guess the reason why I said you were so disruptive is because for, like, that older mentality, you're not a common – like, this is a regular thing for me. I see, you know – I mean, not, you're not, you're not regular, uh, you know, I still think like you're special, like you're, you're unique in a sense that you have a condition, you're super strong, you know what I mean? You're putting up these numbers, but you know, plus I freaking coach a million people. This is normal for, when I see girls lifting big weights, that's normal for me. So for guys that are, if we were to take you and put you on like a freaking, uh, what's that? The show the rock is doing the Titan games, right? People might see oh, yeah. it and they'll be nuts. They'll be like, what? Like how this is not normal, and those are the people that kind of respond. Even when I ask for comment, I ask for questions for for you, 
uh, people were like asking stupid shit, and I'm just like, bro. Like, <laughs> what were they asking? I, what was the worst one? Off. I'll tell you off. I'll tell you off this. I don't wanna. I don't wanna do it here. It's like bad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it after when we when we cut. Are but, you sure? Okay. Yeah, I don't wanna do it here. <laughs> I'll just okay. DM it to you after. I'll just DM it to you. But um. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, it was nuts to me, and I'm just like, I'm just like, I'm just like, bro, like. They've just never seen it before, and for them, it's kind of like I think it comes from insecurity. I think it comes from people uh, just not understanding, like you know, what is possible. Um, you know, if you sorry, I have a window up here, turning off my night shift, but yeah, uh, it's it's not normal for them. So they're insecure. Maybe they're not making the progress that they want to be making, or they're not, um, you know, hitting the numbers they want to be hitting, and they see a girl doing more than them, and they're just like what like oh insulin oh that's why okay okay that's why she's better than me right that's literally that's literally what i believe you know where it comes from um and it's just a it's just a mentality that i hope dies over time you know i hope people just can understand that like instead of seeing someone and going oh that that person is strong because of x variable why not why not like educate yourself on the on the subject and then say oh okay this person works hard just like i work hard you know they've just been at it longer and they have this condition that's actually like a hindrance you get what i'm saying um oh yeah i don't know if you've ever seen it from that perspective but when i see these like crappy comments that's what i think i almost feel bad for them that's what i think too like Things they don't un things they they see a strong deadlift video and then they don't realize that one. Sometimes I work out for three four hours a day. Actually, most of the time I work out for three hours a day. Um, number two, I watch my nutrition meticulously because I absolutely have to. And number three, I just have a really good background too. Like my mom is super strong, um, and she uh, she has a degree in nutrition, so she taught me a lot growing up and that part has really helped me too. So I'm, that really actually gave me a few steps ahead. So with those things, like it's really, yeah, you know, and I also you did, know. honestly, um, I played like every sport growing up and kind of addicted to exercise at this point, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's gotten me yeah, pretty far. Yeah. You don't really let the, the ailment, stop you from you know hitting your goals and things like that and um i hope that you know some people see this video and they they get it more uh like they understand that like there are different people out there there are people that you know um had you not had this condition who knows maybe if you didn't have this condition you wouldn't be you wouldn't you wouldn't you maybe you're an 84 because you're you weren't as strict with your food and you're just more like carefree you know what i mean Oh, probably. Right? And I, yeah, definitely. Everyone, like, a lot of my other, yeah, generally my family seem to tend to, like, my relatives seem to tend um, to gain weight easier, but maybe I probably would have been like that too. Like, they're just, a lot of them are really strong, actually. Yeah, it's, uh, it's like, I don't want to say it's a curse, but it's, like, a good, it's, like, <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to think of a hero that has a condition that like they have to deal with, but it in the end makes them super. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, oh yeah. Again, uh, Jessica, I appreciate you coming on here. We're getting through you know pretty much everything that I wanted to to ask you, and um, you know we're gonna get into the questions. But um, do you ever have do you ever have those down days where you're just like? you don't want to deal with like you really just hate your your diabetes like you really just because of whatever it is that you need to deal with in the moment you're just like i don't want to deal with this oh yeah 100 percent. like i'm doing better now but i definitely yeah there's days where i just hate everything um and especially in school a little more i did struggle with being depressed in Anxiety has been a problem, mostly just generalized, but... Is it related to or just life things, or is it... Just everything. Actually, uh, a really, really large percentage, like the majority of type 1 diabetics experience depression at some point in their life, so 
it's related to everything. It's just one more thing on top of all of life's I could other see things. That. Yeah, I mean, you have so many other things to deal with. I know you have this constant, extra always there. Yeah. Every every high blood sugar feels like failure, and it, every low just feels like crap. So it's kind of yeah. It's a uh, sometimes I do get a pretty twisted perspective, but overall, I think I'm I'm doing all right and nice. All yeah. Right. I mean, you seem. I know. I mean, we always put our best selves on social media, right? Uh, but yeah. But you seem pretty level headed. Um, and you seem like, you know, you, you handle it well and you're not letting it um, kind of stop you from uh, doing what you're going to do. Are you going to be in uh, Sweden this June? I'm hoping so. Got to prove it at this Nationals. If I don't get uh, first or second, then I won't be able to go. So I'm getting pretty, are you pretty being, after are Nationals. You being, um, are you confident or are you... Are you just? I'm not super. I don't know. I'm not. I'm just. I'm more worried about my weight cut at this point because I have trained really hard. I know I'm strong, but a lot of things, anything could happen on the day. So I'm always a little bit anxious about that. But I think you're gonna be fine. I think this is a big. I'll never take anything for granted. I think that that's a great way to think. I think that this is a meet that means a lot to you, and you're gonna do what it takes um, to get it done. And, uh, you know, we'll be watching from the gram. I believe you compete um, the 7th or the 12th or something like seventh. that. 7th. Good, good guess. 7th, right? Yeah. Um, I'm going to be watching Captain Marvel. You know, the 7th, March 7th, I believe it's like Women's Day. I'm pretty sure it's Women's Day here. It's just like a... Is it? I don't know. I don't know where it came from. But, yeah, because Captain Marvel, another... Whoa. Superhero female comes out that day. Uh, she comes out the eighth, but I'm watching on the seventh. So I have I have some people over there competing. Um, so I kind of you know I, I don't know I didn't know exactly when you lifted, but uh, I just took a guess. But uh, yeah, I mean good luck. I hope that you you kill it. Um, and then if you make it, you know we'll see you in Sweden, which I'm not looking forward to that flight. That's like the number one thing that I'm dreading this year. <laughs> Literally out of everything, oh, don't do it. that is what I'm dreading. But um, all right. Yeah, good luck at Arnold. I'll, I'll be watching you there for sure. Oh man, I try and watch the whole I'm thing not, if I can. I'm, not, I'm just like I'm ready to go. You know what I mean? I just want to get it done. I want to do it and and uh, and build on it and you know just keep doing what we're doing. But um, all right. Uh, da, 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 da. let me let's get into the qu questions, uh, guys. I'm not I don't, I'm not gonna just say anyone's name. Um. But I am going to, you know, just kind of ask uh, the questions and kind of go down, go down the list here. Um, all right. So this first one is a, it's a, it's a type one diabetes uh, question. Um, is there any advice? I guess that you'd wish you had received as a preteen. I don't know. I guess they're preteen. I'm not sure why they're asking preteen specifically. But uh, is there any advice you could give to a young person that is dealing, dealing with? Um, well, one thing I wish that people taught was that uh, exercise doesn't just drop your blood sugar. There's kind of it can it can drop and spike your blood sugar. And I wish someone had taught me better how to deal with that because I always played soccer and I just had to have like skittles on me at all times so my sugars wouldn't drop. But then when I started doing track and field like pole vault or 60 meter sprints, my sugars would just spike and I had no idea why and nobody told me for a really long time um how to handle that sorry about that guys uh there's minor technical difficulties that we had to handle um next question um so zone's asking how do you how do you lose weight while you're prepping I'm assuming well I'll let you I'll let you answer do you do anything different than what a normal person would do oh yeah um, cause I have to do the, um, so I usually try and add some cardio two to three times a week, uh, 20 to 30 minutes at a time, usually slower stuff just cause high intensity will burn too much muscle. Um, I have to decide what my calorie deficit is going to be. I plan how many pounds a week I am going to lose in actual mass. And then I also, um, have to systematically and then I plan my calorie deficit from there 
and plan my insulin decrease from there. Interesting. So you yeah, it's, it it's probably so much more than most people would do, but it's very thorough. I mean, you kind of have to be, right? Yeah, I'm going to do a video on it actually soon because I get – that's my most popular question is about cutting weight and losing weight. Nice. So um, – How tall are you? Oh, that is actually – never mind. That's my most popular question. I'm five <laughs> seven and a half. Yeah, you I seem gotta... super tall on the ground, but I saw you this recent Worlds uh, and you're just pretty tall, pretty tall. Just respectable, average height. Respectable. Um <laughs> How how does being diabetic affect your recovery and your performance? I'm not really sure how to uh, rephrase that. Perhaps if you have an answer, let me know. But um, oh yeah, well I mean, with as far as performance goes, it's always a toss up. I mean, I never know if it's gonna how much it's gonna affect my performance, but I always kind of assume it will at least a little bit. And then recovery, I actually, um, as a type 1 diabetic, my body's probably a little pro-inflammatory. So and there's actually been a few small studies that show I might have increased muscle soreness after working out, which, doms. yeah, DOMS, I definitely feel. Interesting. Um, mm -hmm. So another, uh, another example of it not giving you a benefit. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know. Um, there's some, some questions up on here about your technique and it's just like, like, I know, I know the answer and I don't think it's, you know, it's not that interesting. So it's like, it's whatever. Um, we already went over, you know, whether or not, what do you have there? Is that a fruit? Is it? No, no, that's a vegetable. What is that? A pepper? Yeah. So you, are you going to have to take insulin because of that or are you good? No, it's a free food. That is, that is so cool. That is so cool. <laughs> you just pulled out a pepper and started eating it. I'm so hungry. It's been like an hour. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'm hungry too. I just got back from the gym, so I'm about to eat. We're, we're <laughs> no, almost done though. No rush. Um, hi, type 1 diabetic. Also, uh, how do you avoid getting hypoglycemic after a workout? I'm, I'm assuming that's because you've burned up too many sucrose or? Uh, yeah, and then you get more sensitive to your insulin after working out, like – for some people, it's right after, and some people, it's a few hours. Uh, for me, I usually just have – I try and have protein before a workout, and then I try to have protein after as well. Um, I don't have many carbs after a workout because I don't want to be – I don't want to spike my blood sugars or have to do insulin because then I get going on this yo-yo cycle. So just protein pretty much, maybe a little fat. Interesting. Interesting. Good advice. Um out of squat, bench, deadlift, which one do you find most difficult? Oh, that's such a tough question because like deadlifts are so heavy that mentally I just – I don't know if I look forward to them as much anymore. Mm -hmm. Bench I find hardest to improve on. I'm slowly getting there, but – How often do you bench? Four times a week. Don't be afraid to try five. That's something that – yeah, I mean, you can chat to be afraid. You gotta. I'm afraid. No, honestly, um, major key guys coming up. One of the biggest things that's allowed <laughs> me allowed me to just have. I don't want to be arrogant, but you know, I'm doing all right. I've seen some success, and um, oh my god, and, and uh, <laughs> just, just, just like if you have, if everything is telling you that this thing could work, but you're just like, ah, oh, I've never tried it and you're not seeing results trying other things, you can't be afraid to, like, I have some girls bench 24 hours out from their meet. You know what I mean? I have some people benching, you know, every single day that they go in the gym. So, you know, you just uh, don't be afraid to try, but also, you know, be practical. You, yeah, much better. We're almost done, so we won't have to – you won't have to hold it much longer. Um, um, any tips on how to – okay, so, wait. Any tips on how to maintain glucose – from going too high or low during strength training. I think we kind of went over that, but if you just wanted to reiterate. Too high, I guess we could say, like, prevent it from going too high. Too high? Uh, so pre-dosing insulin, um, of course, you have to always have glucose on you and be aware of what it does. 
I kind of play around with it, but I pre-dose a few units before I lift usually. And then you can also do a little bit more intense warm up, like cardio wise, just to increase insulin sensitivity. So like go for a five or 10 minute jog. Mm. Power lifter is worst nightmare, <laughs> but it helps. <laughs> So your preferred uh, food or drink to raise your blood sugar when you're training? Pure glucose. I have a powder drink mix. Uh, I have post-gym, actually. It's pure dextrose. Just mix it in my water or else sometimes I dry scoop it and just let it dissolve in my mouth. Like the sicko I am, but I <laughs> sitting there with a bunch of like glucose in my mouth. But that's my favorite. Uh, it works fastest. So, yeah, this question is do you eat carbs mid-workout? And then, you know, how how do you do insulin for that without monitoring with Libre sensor? Uh, well, I'm always checking my sugars on the Libra, but uh, I only really eat carbs in my workout if I need to um, or like if they're dropping mid-workout. Or I'll sometimes at Rise Strength Lab, there'll be donuts there and I'll just really want one, so... I'll just do insulin for that, of course. Um, and we kind of, you kind of already mentioned that your knowledge of all this stuff kind of helped you with, um, like being a pharmacist is helping you kind of like understand things better and, you know, how things, how insulin can like affect you uh, differently. They're asking if being a pharmacist helped you at all with your progression. <laughs> It definitely gave me access to a lot of studies. I actually think it might be the opposite way around where being diabetic helped me to be a better, helps me to be a better pharmacist. Um, but yeah, having access to all the resources, like all of the nutrition and um, drug studies has been, has definitely been helpful. And just learning how to, well, how to learn and do research has been awesome. Nice. Nice. Um, do... Do cucumbers or, or vegetables like of that family have any effect on, I think this person's talking about type two. They're saying that like, uh, you know, very green kind of leafy vegetables like that might help, help with diabetes, but I'm pretty sure they're talking about type two. Cause like type one, you can't, you can't get it. actually eating better though, really, really helps type one diabetes. Um, Eating a bit lower carb is my preference too. So eating, I do eat a ton of green leafy vegetables and colorful veggies. Well, I was obviously just snacking on a pepper, but um, it's, it's honestly helpful for type one and type two diabetics alike. Type two, especially though, because it's often diet and lifestyle related. So yeah, uh, vegetables are good. Uh, Whoever said that, eat your veggies. <laughs> Uh, this next question is, uh, they're asking more about your diet and they're saying, how do you maintain so much muscle while being so lean? So that brings me to want to ask you, what is your daily protein intake? If you track that, which I'm sure you do. And, um, you know, what, what are your like sources? So I try and get as much protein as I can from food. Um, and I try and get one gram per pound of body weight a day, especially when I'm dieting. Um, I start off my day with a bunch of egg whites um, and mixed with like one whole egg kind of thing. Um, low fat cottage cheese and yogurt, uh, like chicken, salmon, tuna. Um, so a lot of whole foods. A lot of whole foods, yeah. And I do have protein powder bef after a workout sometimes just because it's convenient and then protein bars too, but um, – I try and stick with as much actual food as possible. And you have to take insulin, I'm assuming, with all of this, correct? Yes, uh, less with protein and fat. Um, that's another thing I wish that they taught me when I was younger. But you do have to do smaller, small amounts of insulin for that too, yeah. Got it. Um, uh, if you Ooh. could only do... Well, first off, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming in competition you compete uh, low bar, correct? Yes. Okay. I'm going to modify the question a little bit because it's, we want it to be, you know, want it to make sense here. Uh, what is your favorite accessory that you use to bring up your comp squat? Um, if you do any at all. Oh, that's a really tough one. Um, I love pin squats. 
god you're and i insane. love front squats just because i love <laughs> what you're insane pin squats i love are them pin squats and oh i love those crazy stupid bouncing kettlebell things i don't know if you've seen that on my instagram but bouncing kettlebell i love things. it and uh, front squats uh, front squats i love them I used to do front squats a lot, but I've evolved to the point where I could just squat, uh, and I only squat. Would you believe <laughs> I only squat once a week? It's pretty crazy, right? What? Yeah, I do high bar the other day of the week, but um, I'm very, okay. I'm incredibly low volume. Like I, 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 how many? I'm curious. What's your frequency like squat? So bench is four times. Um. Yeah. Right now. Um. I don't have a coach right now, so I've kind of been doing my own thing for this prep. Uh, like two or three times a week, if you include squat accessories. For squat and deadlift is? Two. Two? Got it. So two, two, four. Got it. Um, so this person was asking if you have cardio days. If so, what do you usually do? I think you already went over that. I think you said two to three times a week. 20. Was it 20 minutes? 20, 20 to 40 minutes. 40 is hard, yeah. It's like, <laughs> yes. mentally, do you listen to music or anything to help it go by, or is there? Oh yeah, okay. who's that kind of psychopath who just doesn't listen to music <laughs> when they cardio? Or I've been watching different movies right now. I was in the middle of watching Venom again, so that I try to only watch it during cardio, so it motivates me to do it. It's a major life hack right there. I love that you dressed up as superheroes and that you just mentioned Venom. <laughs> Like I'm that guy, dude. I am the I'm the dude. People bombard me with stuff all the time because I know that I eat that shit up. But uh, that's so awesome that you like superheroes, guys. So sick. Love them. <laughs> um, I'm just going through this real right here. Uh, someone is asking, have you ever tried strongman? You would probably kill it. I have not tried it. Um, at Metal Performance Training Center, one of the gyms they work out at, they're always trying to get me to do Strong Woman, but maybe one day. I think you have a lot left uh, in powerlifting, and that could potentially hinder your quest for world dominance. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, down the road, I mean, shit, you could do anything. Um, did you do – so we already, we already talked about that. Did you do any sports growing up, and do you oh, – so – the second part of the question is, do you miss sports, playing sports? I definitely do. I don't feel athletic anymore, especially in the winter. I just feel like, well, I don't know, powerlifting, I love it, but I I miss athletic movements because they're very hard to do in the winter here. Like, it was actually, Saskatoon was the coldest place on the planet uh, about a week and a half ago. And Mars. What? It was as cold as Mars. I was. Do you know I, this? I was just telling someone that I know that here in Minnesota it was negative forty, and I was like, "That's like Mars when the sun is." Out. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> someone on my Instagram was saying it's impossible to get that cold, and no, then no, 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 no. So, like, no. <laughs> so I have this theory. I'm sure it's it probably makes sense. The weaker our ozone layer gets, uh, the ozone layer is kind of like um, a greenhouse effect, right? So we keep all our heat inside, right? The, the weaker it gets, more heat's going to expel, and the planet's going to be really, really, really hot when the sun's in summertime and really, really, really cold in the wintertime. Like, it's just going to keep getting progressively more in each direction if we keep destroying. I could be completely off, and, you know, maybe our ozone, there's no evidence, whatever, but in my mind, I'm just like, space is fucking cold, and, like, <laughs> is, is that negative 40? I have clients that are like, Joey, I can't go to gym today. It's negative 40. In my mind, I'm just like, I don't even know what that feels like. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> what is that? Like It's pain. It's pain. Right? It like, just, everything hurts freeze? all do the time. Do just freeze? Like, yeah. They do. Actually, my nostrils, like, your nostrils stick together if when you breathe sometimes, and, oh like, my God car doesn't start it's just everything is yeah all right it's cold um, last of the instagram questions before we close uh why are you such a badass lifter <laughs> couldn't tell you <laughs> couldn't tell you because she has <laughs> this thing that makes her pay attention to everything that's why that is why pay attention to i'm obsessed um, i will get it 
so you know again thank you jessica for coming on i think you know you're you're a great example of someone that can live with this condition and still get the job done um if if you make worlds um, or I guess in, in general this year, do you have any specific goals that you want to leave with? Um, and is there any kind of like, do you have like a cause that you're lifting for or, you know, or is there anything that you want to do with your lifting? I know you said that you wanted to show people that have this condition that they could get it done. Uh, is there anything that you want to do with your lifting this year that, you know, people maybe don't know about? Um, I mean, I just, yeah, I just want to show other type one diabetics that, you can do it and you're not alone because feels like it sometimes, but, um, I think I'm going to start a YouTube channel soon and just talk more about this kind of stuff, give a bit of advice and try and reach out to more people. That's what I, I'm going to do. I think that'd be awesome. Um, and you know, I think what you're doing is great. Keep doing it. Know your worth, know that you can do anything in this sport as long as you like you could be the best 72 in the open if that's something that i mean if that's what you want and your life allows for that i i really think that you know you could buckle down and um you know you could do anything seriously like i mean don't get me wrong i'm i'm, I'm gonna be training some 72s that are gonna keep you honest you know what i mean <laughs> but i think i want that world record right? i want it you, you want it so you you know what to do you got you already got all the details you already have this this condition has taught you how to deal with the hard part right all the little things the food the nutrition all the stuff that i made a post on my team group the other day saying like some stuff about nutrition and it it it, it, it was alarming how many people <laughs> were like oh my god like i eat no protein <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, no. And I'm just like, what? I thought this was like, I thought people knew this. So I just, you know, give more effort to try to make make sure people know that they need to eat. So, um, all right, Jessica, I'm sure your I'm sure your arms are tired from holding the laptop. <laughs> uh, I wanna, My strength endurance is terrible. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, thank you so much. And um, guys, let me get a hashtag. Uh, usually I, I finish these off with a hashtag in the comments below. Is there anything on your mind, Jessica? Let me get a hashtag maple syrup. Hashtag yeah. maple syrup in the comments below. That's another good thing about the frozen car is you get frozen maple syrup when your blood sugar is low. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Alrighty, Jessica. Okay. Thank you.